This is 10 in 10, 10 questions in 10 minutes with a college faculty member on a topic related to human health and well-being. Why 10? Because time is precious. And did you know that human attention span is about eight seconds? You should also know that faculty in the College of Public Health and Human Sciences are world-leading experts in a variety of areas, from nutrition and physical activity to human development and public health. So sit back and give yourself 10 minutes to learn something new about your health and the health of those you love. We promise to make it worth your time. On this episode of 10 in 10, we are joined by well-known nutrition professor and researcher, Emily Ho. For the last eight years, Emily has served as the director of the Moore Family Center for Whole Grain Foods, Nutrition and Preventive Health and is currently transitioning to her new role as the director of the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State. Today, she shares tips for maintaining a healthy lifestyle and how food boosts our immune system. Hi, Emily. Uh, Thanks for joining me to shed some light on uh, how the food we eat supports our immune system, not only in the time of COVID-19, but year round. So first off, um, how can what we eat affect our body's ability to fight infection and ward off disease? Well, first off, um, a healthy immune system is really what's critical to helping our bodies fight against disease and against infections. And the immune system is pretty complicated. It's got lots of different parts. So there isn't necessarily just uh, one thing or one food that's going to really help maintain a a total healthy immune system. Really just eating a balanced diet with a variety of foods that includes things like fruits and vegetables, whole grains is, is really what's best. So are there certain foods that we should eat to boost our immune system? And is there anything to avoid or minimize? There are some foods that can be either beneficial or potentially more harmful to your immune system. Um, The healthy diet should include a diet that has lower fat, especially those uh, bad fats uh, like saturated fats um, and cholesterol. Um, And you should really try to limit um, your sugar intake, especially um, added sugars. Um, At the same time, there's several different nutrients um, that are known to really help the immune system. These are things like vitamin C, uh, vitamin E, uh, vitamin D, and minerals uh, like zinc, and also some other nutrients like the uh, omega-3 fatty acids that can be found in things like fish. So having regular intake of foods that contain these nutrients are really uh, things you can do to help boost your immune system. So things for vitamin C, so citrus foods, for example, like oranges, um, salmon for um, enhanced vitamin D and your omega-3s, and then protein-rich foods for uh, the mineral zinc that I just talked about. So like most people, I'm limiting my trips to the grocery store. Um, How can I still eat healthy with a limited pantry? And are there certain things I should stock up on when I do go to the store? Yeah, stocking up on those components of a healthy diet are always good. So stocking up in your fruits and vegetables and whole grains um, are a great idea. Um, Unfortunately, especially fresh uh, items, uh, they can have a pretty limited shelf life. Uh, But you got to remember, you don't always have to have fresh. Um, Frozen foods, um, canned foods um, are all great options and you don't lose the nutrients um, just because they're not fresh. So you can store them for a longer time. Um, You do need to be cautious, though, uh, of reading your food labels. So for example, if you're If you are purchasing canned foods, you want to make sure to try to choose fruits that are uh, packed in water rather than sugary syrups. Mm -hmm. Um, And you want to look for added salt sometimes um, in some of your frozen, especially ones that have the ready sauces. Mm -hmm. Um, You can also buy your produce in bulk and freeze it on your own as well. That's another great option or uh, freeze meals uh, for uh, later use. Related to the current pandemic, I keep uh, I keep reading that well, it's okay not to eat perfect during this time, and and I do agree to a point. Um, I'm curious what you think about that. 
you know, it's, it's always okay to give yourself some grace. You don't have to be perfect all the time, especially uh, during these crisis times, but really, you know, every day, um, you don't have to be perfect. perfect. But uh, with that said, you know, we've been in the pandemic now for several months um, and it doesn't look like it's gonna go away for several months either. So months of unhealthy eating can really have some both uh, short-term and long-term consequences in your health. So you do really need to put um, some effort into staying healthy and, and really try to have it as a priority for both you um, and your family. Um, eating well is a big part of, of being healthy. So you, you need to, to, to really think about it. But at the same time, um, you can make it a priority, uh, but you can do it in small steps. Uh, maybe next time you go grocery shopping, uh, you buy brown rice instead of white rice. Uh, maybe you do buy a few more vegetables, uh, try uh, a new recipe. So just you know, do it in, do it in small steps. Um, again, you don't have to be perfect. Um, give yourself some grace, but just inch back towards those healthy habits. What's your everyday go-to food for boosting immunity, for staying healthy? Well, it's not an everyday food, but I am um, a big uh, proponent of zinc. Uh, so for my go-to uh, immune boosting food, uh, I love to treat myself to oysters. Again, it's not something I'll do every day, but they have a huge amount of zinc. Um, so they're a great way to uh, help boost my immune system. Um, I will say though, especially now during the pandemic, I have been making sure I take uh, a multivitamin, multimineral, uh, just to make sure on those, especially on those days where I might not be eating as well, that I'm, I'm meeting my nutrient needs. And are there times when food sources fall short and uh, are there supplements? Like you, you mentioned a multivitamin. Um, are there things that could help? Yeah, um, it's really important to make sure that you're getting uh, the full complement of these uh, essential micronutrients and nutrients. And generally, if you eat a balanced, healthy diet, you should be uh, meeting most of those needs. Um, but again, there's times that you might not be eating as healthy. So uh, a multivitamin or a multi-mineral um, may help kind of fill those gaps. Vitamin D for, is a good example of this. Um, we get vitamin D both from our foods, but we also produce it in our skin with a uh, with sunlight and Oregonians in particular um, sometimes have, have problems producing enough vitamin D. So they may need to consume more, um, even more than that they find in foods. They may look, need to look at supplements, um, especially uh, an elderly uh, population, older individuals um, that have uh, less ability to produce vitamin D sometimes uh, may need to look at supplements. You've mentioned zinc and we've talked about supplements and I'm known to brag about um, my when I when I start feeling a little under the weather in the winter, I start popping zinc. Um, so um, yeah, good, bad, otherwise. No, that's a great question, and I, a question that uh, we get a lot. Um, the role of zinc supplementation for the cold is, is a bit controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of studies that show it has um, some benefit, but there's an equal number that say it doesn't have a benefit. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do know that if you aren't getting enough zinc, um, so if you are susceptible to zinc deficiency, your immune system is going to be in, in trouble um, and your ability to fight off a cold is going to be pretty severely compromised. So if you take a zinc supplement and bring yourself back to normal, you'll boost your immune system and help be able to, to fight off that cold. Uh, one of the, where the controversy comes from is that we currently don't have a great test for zinc deficiency. Uh, so it's pretty difficult to, to find and, and detect. So in all the studies that use zinc supplementation, uh, we don't know if we are reversing a deficiency or um, doing a true supplement. Um, and if you already have enough zinc and then supplement with zinc, additional zinc, there's not as much evidence that that's helpful. Um, but at this point with the studies that are currently out there, we can't tell that difference. Um, bottom line, you need to make sure that you're getting enough zinc, um, but getting additional zinc may not be any additional benefit. So if someone wants to dive deeper into this topic and, and micronutrients and eating healthier, can you um, give us a few resources that you would recommend? 
Yeah, if you want to learn more about these micronutrients, their role in health, and specifically their role in the immune system, um, you can go to the Lyons Pauling Institute. Uh, there is a resource there, a web resource called the Micronutrient Information Center. Um, it's got some great resources um, on um, nutrients. And in particular, um, just uh, very recently, we have some updated uh, inf information around specifically nutrients and immune system relative to COVID-19. If you're looking for how to use those foods, highly recommend going to the More Family Center website where we've got a ton of resources around um, healthy recipes and foods. Um, and then our friends um, in Extension also have another great resource called uh, Food Hero, which is a fantastic recipe resource as well. On a lighter note, uh, do you have a guilty food pleasure, a hidden uh, chocolate stash perhaps, or um, is that is that just me too? <laughs> definitely not just <laughs> you. Um, I definitely have a, a soft spot for, for chocolate as well. Um, so I often have chocolate stashes um, all over my office and, and my home. Um, I in particular love dark chocolate because uh, I like to tell myself it's full of these healthy flavonoids um, that have some potential health benefit. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not kidding myself. Um, it's not a health food, it's a guilty pleasure, but uh, it has its place. What other things have you been doing or eating uh, to stay healthy and also just maintain good well being? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, right now um, in Oregon, there's such an abundance of, of fresh fruit right now. So I've been taking advantage of getting out. Um, just this past weekend, I picked uh, 25 pounds of, of blueberries for our household. So we've been uh, on a blueberry fix currently, but um, definitely trying to cook more with the family and make it kind of a family activity as well for uh, my boys and I to bond and uh, um, also just learn together about food and, and, and health and just do things that are kind of fun. Um, I think overall, I mean, health is such a, a complicated uh, thing to think about. And there's a lot of little things that, all, that I'm trying to do in addition to eating well, I'm trying to make sure I'm staying active, trying to make sure that I'm getting enough sleep, um, trying to make sure that I smile and laugh you know, <laughs> once a day at least as well. Um, all these components are really important for your health. Um, so just trying to do a little bit each day uh, to me is important. All right, well, I thank you so much for uh, your time today and I hope everyone uh, will check out the resources um, that will accompany this. So thank you very much, have a good day. Great, thanks. Bye. Bye.